friends welcome to edutab so as part of this video series edutab brings to you a discussion on the various topics related to agriculture now these topics have relevance when it comes to certain examinations that have agriculture as its core component now these examinations are nabard grade ab ibps af4 fci ibps af4 scale 2 in rrb now as part of this particular series we have already released five videos so kindly watch those videos before moving on to this particular video so in this video we shall be discussing various factors affecting crop production we shall have a quick look at the factors and we shall just see the important points which we need to keep in mind with respect to our examination before we move ahead let us have a look at the courses which are offered by edutap so edutap offers courses related to rbi grade b nabard grade a and b CTET which has been launched in association with Grada we also offer free tests for RBI 2018 examination now to know more about our courses kindly visit our website at www.edutap.co.in Let's have a look at the relevance of this topic with respect to our examination. Now, with regard to NABARD Grade A, this topic comes under Phase One, Agriculture and Rural Development section. In Phase Two, it comes under the topic of Factors Affecting Crop Production. With regard to IBPS AFO, it comes under the broader topic of Agronomy. Now, before we move on, it is very important for us to know the previous year questions. Now, these questions have a lot of significance because it helps us to Uh, build our orientation towards approaching a particular topic right so with regard to nabard 2017 there was a question which said what is the ideal temperature of a plant rice so we if we see this is a very fact based question there is not much of concept that is involved now if you take temperature it is a very important factor that affects crop production now for each plant we have an optimum temperature that exists we shall be having a look at it when we are into the topic now in ibps af for 2017 uh, there was a question which said relative humidity favorable for growing most of the crops so here there's a generalized statement here there was a specific question that was asked so the answer was 40 to 60% again we see that this is a fact based question so now how are we going to approach this topic we are going to see what are the important facts under each of the factors that affect crop production and that is going to be our orientation here we shall see a broad classification of the factors that affect the crop production so the broad factors are external that is environmental factors and internal internal is nothing but genetic or hereditary factors so in the coming sections we shall have a look at the classification of the external factors so here we shall just have a look at what are the genetic factors so plants are made up of genes like how humans and animals are now because of this genetic makeup the plant has certain characteristics now these characteristics of plants which are attributed to its genetic composition are not affected much by the environmental factors right let us have a look at what these factors are for example the ability of a plant to withstand drought flood or salinity conditions right the tolerance to insect pests and diseases the chemical composition of grains like how much is the oil content the protein content what is the quality of grains by quality of grains we mean the fineness the coarseness right what is the yield uh, yielding ability of a plant so these are some of the factors that are mainly due to the genetic composition of plants now we shall move on have a look at what are the various external factors that affect crop production Now, what are the external factors that affect crop production? They are climatic, edific, biotic, physiographic, and socio-economic. So, by climatic factors, we are meaning the factors like temperature, rainfall, relative humidity, atmospheric gases, and precipitation. Now, these factors are very important because more than 50% of a yield of a crop is actually dependent upon the climatic conditions in which the crop is grown. right next comes edific factors edific factors refer to the soil characteristics on which the crop is grown this is again a very important factor affecting crop production then comes biotic factors by biotic factors we mean the harmful as well as the beneficial effects that the other bio organisms or the biological organisms have on crops now these biological organisms can be other plants or they can be animals that is flora or fauna 
Now, how do they affect the crop production? Let us take an example. Now, suppose that there is a field in which the crops are actually very closely spaced. So, what happens is there is a competition that exists between these closely spaced crops for nutrients that they gain from the soil, the sunlight, the moisture. So, here we see there is a struggle for survival, right? And let us see the beneficial effect. In the same field, if legumes and cereals are grown, then there's a beneficial relationship that exists between the two. And because of this, there's an increase in yield of crops, right? Next come to the fauna. Like how do the animals affect crop production? Let us take examples of beneficial relationship. This is a very day-to-day -day example like the honeybees and wasps. They help in cross-pollination because of that increase in yield is uh, taking place, right? Now, uh, we have snails in the soil. These are soil organisms, right? So, these snails, what they do is they feed on the mineral matter and the organic matter that actually exists in the soil. Now, while doing this, they decompose these things, right? And that actually makes a soil rich, for time. See here example of a beneficial relationship. Now what about harmful relationship by animals? Uh, for example, we see that damage to crop plants is caused by the grazing that is done by cattle and goats. So this is how other biological organisms have an effect on the crop production. Coming to physiographic factors, these factors are factors like topography, altitude, steepness of slope, exposure to light and wind. We shall be having a look at it in the further section. Then comes the socioeconomic factor. When we are talking about economic factors, let us take an example that there is a farmer that is a smaller marginal farmer. And that farmer does not have enough resources to spend on good quality inputs. So if the uh, inputs are not of good quality, automatically the yield is also of lower quality. So we are seeing that even the financial position or how a society treats its farmers, the social conditions, that also has a lot of bearing on uh, crop production. These are the climatic factors that affect crop production, temperature, relative humidity, precipitation, solar radiation, wind velocity and atmospheric gases. So temperature actually affects the growth of plant from germination stage, development of the crop, leaf expansion and the flowering process. So we see that it plays a very prominent role. Now what happens is for, a, for our examination, there are few values that we need to retain or memorize. Now what are those values? For temperature, usually there is a range of temperature that is 15 degrees Celsius to 40 degrees Celsius within which most of the agricultural plants show maximum growth. So this value needs to be memorized. Now for each crop, there is a particular temperature which is the optimum temperature at which it sh the, that particular crop shows maximum growth. Right Now for our examination, have a look at the important crops and for those crops, kindly memorize the optimum temperature. Then comes relative humidity. So humidity is the amount of water that the air can hold. So when we say relative humidity, we are saying that in comparison to the actual amount of water that the air can hold, how much amount of water actually exists. So suppose we say that the relative humidity is 60%. It means that the air can, uh, there, there can be an addition of uh, water to that particular air pocket up to 100%. That means only 100 units out of it, 60 units of water are present. So there is a scope of addition of 40 units of water. So what is the optimum range of relative humidity for the growth of uh, crops? It is 40 to 60 percent. Right. Moving on to precipitation. Precipitation includes all water which falls from the atmosphere. It can be in the form of rainfall, snow, hail, fog and dew. So this one if you see precipitation when you are talking about this you need to understand one important point that not only the amount but the distribution of rainfall also plays a very prominent role. Right? Only then the crops can actually show a maximum production. Then comes to, uh, we come to solar radiation. Now the solar radiation actually regulates the distribution of temperature. And this temperature regulates the crop production. 
Now we need to know that not all of the radiation can be observed by the plants for the process of photosynthesis. So there is only a particular radiation that can be used that is known as photosynthetically active radiation. So this photosynthetically active radiation PAR is a visible radiation. Only this radiation is useful for photosynthesis. The range of this radiation is 0.4 to 0.7 mu meter or 400 to 700 nanometer. So kindly memorize this value for examination. Right. Next we move on to wind velocity. Now wind velocity if you see how does it affect crop production because it affects the supply of moisture. It affects the supply of heat carbon dioxide. So thus it affects crop production. Now, what is the ideal value? The ideal value is 4 to 6 kilometer per hour. When the wind velocity is between this range, it is suitable, right? Then moving on to atmospheric gases. We all know that how important is carbon dioxide for plants. It utilizes them in the process of photosynthesis, right? And oxygen is also needed for it to breathe. Right, And then the atmospheric nitrogen is actually fixed in the soil by the process of lightning, by the process of rainfall and we also have certain nitrogen fixing microbes. Right, And nitrogen is a very very important nutrient for plant. So these are some of the atmospheric gases that the plants cannot live without. And there are certain gases like sulfur dioxide, carbon monoxide, methane which are actually harmful to plants. Now these are the various edific factors that affect crop production. As a part of a later video, we shall be discussing these factors in detail. For now, let us see what are these factors. So it is soil moisture, soil air, soil temperature, soil mineral matter, soil reaction, soil organic matter and soil organism. So kindly keep these factors in mind. Here we are having a look at the various physiographic factors that affect crop production. They are topography, altitude, steepness of slope and exposure to light and wind. So when we are talking about topography, we are to uh, referring to the surface of the earth, whether it is leveled, that is even or uneven. Now let us take an example to understand how this influences crop production. Now we have rice and we know that rice is a crop that requires water stagnation. So we would definitely plant rice in an area where water actually gets stagnated. So for example, plain area or maybe a valley. We would never plant it in the hill slopes where we do not have any other technique to retain water because then the water would get drained off and it would affect the yield of rice, right? Moving ahead with altitude. Now as the altitude increases, our temperature decreases, our precipitation increases. Wind velocity also is affected depending upon the altitude. So here we are seeing that because of this physiographic factors our other climatic factors are getting affected or changed and because of the change in the climatic factors our crop production would get affected. So we are seeing that these physiographic factors actually indirectly affect the crop production. Then we come to steepness of slope. So if a slope is very steep, then automatically during rainfall, there is a runoff and the water gets drained very quickly. And because of that, all the soil nutrients are actually removed and they're taken away by rain. So because of this, the soil here in this particular slope loses its fertility and it is no longer suitable for our crop production. Similarly, we have exposure to light and wind that also plays a lot of role in affecting crop production. Now we have come to the questions. Now these questions are part of your homework. So kindly discuss these questions and then write the answers of these in the comment section below. We shall be having a discussion of the answers of these questions in our coming video. So the questions are what is photoperiodism? Which instrument is mainly used to measure wind velocity? What is meant by cardinal temperature and list the cardinal temperatures of wheat, maize and sorghum. 
Now let us discuss MCQs which are related to the topic of discussion. So the first question says, what do we mean by diurnal variation of temperature? So basically this is a term which we are using here. We need to know what does it mean. So is it temperature variation between day and night? Is it temperature variation between various seasons? Or the temperature variation between two places? Temperature variation between desert and hill station? Or is it temperature variation between land and sea? So our correct answer is A. Diurnal variation of temperature means the temperature variation that exists between the day and night of a particular day. Right? So kindly keep this term in mind. Now the second question of ours is, which of the following factors is or are correct regarding the factors that affect crop production? The first statement says, though rainfall has major influence on yield of crops, yields are not always directly proportional to the amount of precipitation as excess above optimum reduces the yield. So this statement is correct because like I said that each crop needs certain favorable conditions that may be an optimum temperature, it may be optimum amount of rainfall. So those amounts which are needed in optimum above that or below that would actually cause a problem. So we cannot say that as the amount of rainfall increases, yield increases. No, there might be certain plants which actually require very less amount of water, right? So this statement of ours is correct. Second one, very few crops can perform well when the relative humidity is 80% and above. This statement is again correct. Now we had discussed what is the range within which the plants uh, show better growth in terms of relative humidity. It is 40% to 60%. Most of the plants cannot survive when there is 80% or more relative humidity, right? Option C. The appropriate choice of crops by human beings to satisfy the food and fodder requirement of farm households is an important socio-economic factor that affects crop production. Yes, this statement again stands to be correct because the choice of crop is determined by the needs of the people, right? And because of that needs, there's a variation in the type of crop that they choose, right? So this is a correct statement. Option D. Nearly 50% of yield is attributed to the influence of climatic factors. Yes, this statement is again correct. Climatic factors like temperature, rainfall, humidity, precipitation, etc. play a very important role in the yield of crops. So our answer stands to be E, all the above. All the above statements are correct. So what is coming next for us? So in the next video, we shall have a discussion upon first of all the questions that we had given as part of this video. And then we shall move on and have a look at the various edific factors in detail. By edific factors, by now you must be knowing that we're talking about the various factors like soil temperature, soil air, soil reactions, soil organism and etc. So let's wait for the next video. So friends, with this, we have come to the end of this video. If you want us to discuss any particular topic related to agriculture, kindly mention those topics in the comment section below. We shall try our best to come out with a uh, detailed explanation with regard to that particular topic. So till then, have a great time. Thank you and happy learning.